Today, we turn our hearts toward heaven. We need a word from heaven, a word in season. Our hearts are excited. We're going to Philippians chapter 4. We're going to read verses 8 and 9 from the expanded Bible. Finally, in conclusion, now then, brothers and sisters, think about, focus your thoughts on, fill your minds with things that are true and honorable and right, just and pure and beautiful, lovely and respected, commendable. If there is anything that is good, morally excellent, and worthy of praise, think about, focus your thoughts on, fill your minds with these things. Do what you learned and received and heard from me and what you saw me do, and the God who gives peace will be with you. At the beginning of verse 8, the Apostle Paul tells the church at Philippi to focus your thoughts on, fill your minds with. He repeats the same near the end of that verse. Focus your thoughts on, fill your minds with. Now listen, any truth appearing twice, especially in one passage of Scripture, is of extreme importance. Focus on what? Fill our minds with what? That which is true, honorable, right, pure, lovely, commendable, and excellent. What greatly adds impact to these words is that Paul wrote them from prison. It may seem strange that a man in prison would be telling a church to keep focused, but it shows us that even in chains, Paul never lost perspective. Even bound in prison, Paul never lost clarity. The lesson we learn here from Paul is that our inward attitudes do not have to reflect our outward circumstances. This is one of the great reasons that Paul finished so well. And this is why Paul could boldly tell the Philippians in verse 9, do what you learned and received and heard from me and what you saw me do. Today I minister on this subject, a well-focused life, a well-finished life. A well-focused life, a well-finished life. The effectiveness of our lives, church, is directly associated with the focus of our hearts. And the focus of our heart is determined by the focus of our thoughts. This is extremely important because where we place our focus is generally the direction we find ourselves going. Therefore, we must guard our minds. According to Proverbs 23, verse 7, for as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. A well-focused life will make possible a well-finished life. The heart of Jesus had a focus, and that was to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work, John chapter 4 and verse 34. At the end, Jesus would cry from the cross, it is finished, John chapter 19 and verse 30. As we've already seen, the heart of Paul was focused on living an exemplary life, one worthy of following and imitating and at the end, Paul would say, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. How can we then have a well-focused life that leads to a well-finished life? Number one, we must be removed from our distractions. Removed from our distractions. Staying focused will demand being removed from our distractions. You know, throughout this year, 2020, the year of focus, we have shared often in regards to distractions. We've been encouraged to be alert so as to avoid distraction. And while that is indeed most necessary, and it is a great starting place, ultimately, what is vital to living a well-focused life and finishing well is to be removed from the distraction, not just alert and on our guard where distractions are concerned, but the removing of the distraction, removing ourselves from the distractions. While 
Indeed, distractions are inevitable in a busy and stressful world. The secret is minimizing their influence. And the way to minimize the influence of distractions is to be removed from them, to be proactive in removing ourselves from them. Like Joseph in Genesis chapter 39, listen, that brother removed himself from the distraction. He removed himself from Potiphar's wife. Interesting, verse 7 of Genesis 39 says, she cast her eyes upon Joseph. She cast her eyes upon Joseph, but Joseph was intentional in staying focused. He was intentional in removing himself from the distraction. And intentionality is required to remove ourself from the distraction. It requires being intentional. You see, the more intentional you are when it comes to your day-to-day focus, the easier it will be to disconnect from the distraction. Being intentional protects you from being pulled left and right by random thoughts and feelings. Being intentional in staying removed from the distraction strengthens you to stay clear of those with evil intentions towards you. In fact, we read even where Joseph is concerned, day after day, it says that she cast her eyes toward Joseph, but he stayed intentional in keeping himself clear. Romans chapter 16, verses 17 and 18 says, one final word of counsel, friends, keep a sharp eye out for those who take bits and pieces of the teaching that you learned and then use them to make trouble. Give these people a wide berth. They have no intention of living for our master Christ. They're only in this for what they can get out of it and aren't above using pious, sweet talk to dupe unsuspecting innocence. Secondly, to live a well-focused life that produces a well-finished life, we must be resolved resolved in our direction, resolved in our direction. First, we must be removed from our distractions. Secondly, we must be resolved in our direction. Staying focused will demand being resolved in our direction. In Isaiah chapter 50 and verse 7, it is prophesied of Christ, I set my face like a flint and I know that I shall not be ashamed. Isaiah is describing the courage in Christ's firm resolve to never shrink away from the great purpose that he had been given. Jesus knew exactly what he had to do and nothing could derail him from fulfilling the will of his father. Although every detail may not be understood, once we are convinced that a particular course of direction is God's will, we must be undaunted in our effort to focus, to follow, and to fulfill it. Our challenge is we lose focus because we find ourselves waiting until we feel the time is right. We lose focus because we we, we feel like we can't afford it or We we lose focus because we want to figure it all out first. What if Abraham had waited for God to supply him with a map before leaving his home and his father's house in Genesis 12? What if Nehemiah had waited on, on, on God to provide the blueprints before rebuilding a wall around Jerusalem? What if Esther had waited for God to speak from a burning bush? Those who walk with God, those who are obsessed with following God will find greater confidence in the steps that are taken, even when everything is not fully clarified. Finally, to have a well-focused life and to finish well, we must be restrained, restrained in our desires. Restrained, first we must be removed We must be removed from our distractions. Secondly, resolved in our direction. And then thirdly, to have a well-focused life, finishing well, we must be restrained in our desires. Staying focused will demand being restrained. 
in our desires. In Colossians chapter 3 and verse 2, Paul writes, set your affection on things above, not on things of the earth. Jesus explained why this is so important. In Matthew chapter 6 and verse 21, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. The Lord knows that as humans, we have the tendency to move towards the object at which we are staring. We have the tendency, Jesus knows, we have the tendency to move toward where our eyes are fixed or the object upon which we are staring, that which has captured our attention. Someone said it this way, a disciplined stare will always prevent a disappointing life. A disciplined stare will always prevent a disappointing life. The only way to maintain a right perspective of this world is to make sure that nothing within this world grabs our attention more than Jesus. While Abraham beheld many beautiful lands, e Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 12 says, Abraham's eyes were looking forward to that city with solid foundations of which God himself is both architect and builder. While Moses beheld the spectacular riches and treasures of Egypt, Hebrews eleven twenty six 26 says he considered the reproach of Christ more precious than all the wealth of Egypt, for he looked steadily at the ultimate, not the immediate reward. Listen to the conclusion in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 13. It says, these heroes all died still clinging to their faith, not even receiving all that had been promised to them, but they saw beyond the horizon the fulfillment of their promises and gladly embraced it from afar. They all lived their lives on earth as those who belonged to another realm. A well-focused life led them all to a well-finished life. Let's pray together. Lord, our desire is to finish well. God, our desire is to finish strong. More than anything, we long to hear you say to us, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Therefore, for now, may we never forget, O oh God, that the effectiveness of our lives is directly associated with the focus of our hearts and that the focus of our hearts, O oh God, is determined by the focus of our thoughts and our thought life. We guard our minds, my Father, replacing ungodly thoughts with those that are true and honorable, right, pure, those which are lovely and excellent, O oh God. With intentionality, we see ourselves removed from the distractions. We choose to be resolved in our direction. We choose to walk with you, O oh God, obsessed with following and obeying your commands, focused on the restraint of our desires, a disciplined stare, a disciplined stare, nothing in this world grabbing our attention away from you, Lord Jesus, that we might live a well-focused life that leads us to a well-finished life. In Christ's name, we pray, amen and amen. Come on, give him glory, give him honor. He's mighty to save. Just before we go, where is your life headed today? Listen to me, where is your life headed today? Do you want to finish well? If you desire to know more about entering a relationship with Jesus Christ, or if you would like to know more about Nairobi Lighthouse Church, we want to invite you to, to text or to call the number that is at the bottom of your screen. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to chat with you. We'd love to pray with you and help you. God bless you.